I'm Del Spratty, your superintendent, and I want to take just a few minutes to tell you something of this wonderful academy, which is yours. An institution of learning is a complex place in every aspect. The administrators, the faculty, the employees all play an important part in the running of any institution. But in my estimation, the most important aspect of any school is its faculty. Teachers are the very heart of Culver and have always been. I can assure you that you as alumni and you as parents realize this as well as I. I have seen teachers, and you have too, who have been able to inspire a youngster to reach heights which you thought was impossible. In fact, they have brought light where there was only darkness before. We've always been fortunate here in Culver in having a wonderful faculty who've come from wide fields of experience and with different philosophies of education. Yet every one of them has had one single thing in common, and that is his ability to inspire a youngster to do his best. The great teachers, and there have been many great teachers here at Culver, have devoted their lives to teaching youngsters, teaching cadets to become men, to become patriotic citizens, and to learn for the sheer joy of learning. And our faculty has inspired our students to become great citizens in this country. The pictures that follow will show a small sampling of our present faculty. We have also been fortunate enough to interview several of your old friends who reside in this neighborhood. You will see employees who have been here at Culver since before the turn of the century, and you will see some will realize are now on duty. I hope that as you look at these pictures, you will see many familiar faces, and that these faces will inspire you to continue your great support of this wonderful institution, which we call Culver. We love it. It's worthy of your support, and I earnestly request that you continue your great interest in this academy. Ernest Benson is remembered by some alumni as a biology teacher by others as a counselor, and to those who have attended Culver in more recent years as Dean of the Academy and Deputy Superintendent. A Boston University and Harvard graduate, he has been a member of the Culver faculty since 1936. In his current position, Dean Benson leads and works closely with the faculty on curriculum development and research to make certain Culver remains in the forefront of the nation's schools in teaching methods equipment, and course content. Frank Wally Wallatis is equally proud of the great swimming teams he has coached at Culver and the excellent students of German he has taught. Now in his 36th year of teaching at the academy, Wally is a University of Michigan graduate. One of the most beloved men to serve Culver is Roy Sheep Scott. His enthusiasm for Culver cadets and his willingness to help them will be remembered by former cadets dating back to the turn of the century. Although the years have taken their toll, Sheep is still active and can be seen at baseball games and other athletic events, rooting Culver on to victory. A great teacher of mathematics and chairman of the math department, Colonel Bob Shanks still resides in Culver. He was a member of the faculty from 1919 until his retirement in 1955. Walt Strait has been a distinguished member of the faculty since 1934. He now holds the important positions of Epley Chairholder of Physics and Chairman of the Science Department. He received his degree from Albion College and the University of Michigan.
Dr. George Johnson has retired and then unretired because of his devotion to Culver and the boys it serves. An outstanding teacher of chemistry, an Epley chairholder, and former chairman of the science department, Dr. Johnson remains on call to serve the academy whenever needed. Admiral John Bays is director of summer schools, a year-round position in which he plans, develops, and carries out a complex program for 1,700 boys and 100 girls. Admiral Bays, a Culver graduate, has had a brilliant Navy career following his graduation from Annapolis. Since his return to Culver in 1949, he has held many important administrative positions and is secretary of the foundation board. Summer school's alumni, particularly those of the Naval School, will well remember Bud Craft, the colorful Maxim Cuckey sailor who keeps the Naval fleet in first class running order. Bud also built the Fowler and the Yarnell, the queen ships of the Culver fleet. Many a boy has discovered the grandeur of good literature in Art Hughes' English classes. He has been an exciting and challenging teacher at Culver since 1944. His ability and creative spirit also guide the English department in his role as chairman and Epley chairholder of English. Alternately gruff and gentle, humorous and serious, Wally Galnick rates as one of the country's great teachers of mathematics. He also is famed throughout the Culver community for his exploits on the golf course and his ability to grow delicious strawberries. He prepared for a teaching career at Middlebury College and Marquette University. For many alumni, a must stop and a visit to Culver is the home of Charles Dickerson, friend of thousands of cadets and former head of the dining hall waiters. Charlie continues to amaze former students by his ability to call them by name and recall their Culver days, even though they might have graduated decades before. Colonel Hid Walmer was a colorful tactical officer and mathematics teacher from 1921 until his retirement in 1948. He continues to reside in his home on North Terrace and has a wide variety of interests to keep his retirement years full. French, as it should be spoken, has been taught to cadets since 1937 by master instructor Bert Curry. This Princeton graduate continues as a major reason why the Academy Foreign Languages Department is so highly rated. A retired Naval Reserve officer, Bert devotes many of his summers to leading Naval School midshipmen in boating activities. Jock Sutherland and Pat Hodgkins continue as superb teachers of mathematics and English. Jock has been particularly effective with fifth class cadets. Pat has one son who graduated from the academy, another enrolled now, and a third who will follow. Both spend much of their leisure time working outdoors, Jock in his vegetable garden and Pat in his yard. Al Donnelly has lost none of his imagination or humor or his ability to devise mathematics problems that involve every boy in the class. The result is a superb job of teaching, as it has been since 1937. Al holds the William Pitt Oaks Memorial Chair. He and Math Department Chairman Ray Jurgensen are co-authors of widely used textbooks. Quiet, soft-spoken Harold Scott has left the dining hall but continues to serve Culver as major domo of the alumni house. He remains today, as he has been for many years, one of the best friends Culver men ever had. Harold is typical of many veteran faculty members and employees in his devotion and loyalty to Culver and those it serves. Warner Williams Studio in the Music and Art Building is today, as it has been since 1940, a sanctuary for creative-minded cadets. 
If you need help in the wide world of arts or clear-sighted philosophic advice, Warner is your man. He has two sons enrolled in winter school and a daughter who will be a co-ed candidate soon. Mike Benner is a master instructor in both the sciences and mathematics, but in recent years he has been concentrating his efforts in the mathematics field. He recently completed 20 years of service to Culver Cadet. A native Hoosier, Mike has degrees from Earlham College and Indiana University and has taken further courses at several universities. One of the best liked and most colorful residents of the East Shore is Lou Stone who leads an activity-filled life in retirement. Lou will be remembered by many friends who knew him from his days in the ROTC detachment in the Department of Horsemanship. John Roos never viewed Latin as a dead language, and he doesn't today. He still dresses up in Roman costumes for the interest of his students and leads his classes in commemoration of important Roman events. Shirley John is an outstanding example of creativity in teaching. It's possible that the alumni office could function without Esther Pudge O'Callaghan, but nobody at Culver believes it. Daughter of the late beloved band leader and tactical officer, Colonel O'Callaghan, Pudge renders great service to alumni and always cheerfully. Whenever you are on campus, drop in for a visit with this most charming and gracious lady. If ever a physician knew boys, it's Dr. Milan Baker. His years of service at Culver since 1938 have taught him to spot instantly the boy who is sick and the boy who thinks he is, a disorder so often related to the well-known malady homesickness. Regardless, Dr. Baker sees to it that he receives the best treatment appropriate for the individual boy's case. Another old friend of Culver Ben who makes his home in retirement is Roy Watts. Cadets of recent years will remember him for his wonderful help at Beeson Hall, while others will recall his cheerful service in the dining hall. The days just aren't long enough for all of Judge Stinchcomb's hobbies in retirement. He seldom misses an academy athletic contest or cultural event, and he still finds time to tutor an occasional youngster bogged down in the intricacies of math. In addition to his duties at Culver as chairman of the mathematics department and every chairholder, Ray Jurgensen is called frequently by national mathematics organizations for his counsel and help. Ray recently completed 25 years of brilliant service at Culver. He received his degrees from Carleton College and the University of Iowa and has done advanced work at other universities. For 48 years, 1912 to 1954, Colonel Johnny Johnston was an outstanding part of the Culver scene as band director, TAC officer, counselor, woodcraft camp director. Colonel Ed Payson and Mac McQuillan are prime examples of how Culver teachers arouse interest and a desire for accomplishment through their own infectious enthusiasm. Ed Payson asks much of his musicians, whether it is practicing for a parade, concert, or the famed summer moonlight serenade he started, but his smile of approval is a great reward for any boy. Mac McQuillan uses his delightful Scotsman's humor to good effect in encouraging his charges in English and speech classes and on the debating team. A source of regret to everyone at Culver was the retirement of Hasse Hossamer because he never could be fully replaced in waterfront activities. He is enjoying his retirement and continues as a local resident. Colonel Kemp Moore and Ken Hesgard know boys and enjoy leading and teaching them. Kemp still produces outstanding companies as counselor of Company A and Ken helps the brilliant 
and not so brilliant through the mathematics curriculum. Colonel Ed Stevenson has moved in recent years from the position of commandant to special assistant to the superintendent for parents' organizations. Some of those he once counseled as boys, he now is counseling as parents with sons at the academy. A West Point graduate, Steve also works with many alumni he formerly counseled in carrying out the annual giving fund for the continuing improvement of the academy. Many remember Ace Bird for his efficiency as a custodian and his unfailing good humor. Ace now has retired from active service, but he retains his humor and keen interest in everything that goes on at the academy. Coke Smith has not lost over the years any of his spirit or contagious enthusiasm since he joined the faculty in 1943. Whether he's teaching math, counseling, or coaching a track team, Coke convinces a boy a problem is not as difficult as he might have thought. Colonel Mel Estee is an all-purpose man with the ability, training, and desire to do an outstanding job in a wide variety of endeavors. After heading the history department for several years, he is serving the academy as commandant. Colonel Martin Ubel, who joined the faculty in 1940, continues to lead Company C as counselor and to teach German. Quietly but firmly, he gives a sense of purpose and direction to teenage boys trying to find themselves. Another man who has helped Culver cadets with his wisdom and keen sense of dedication is John Edgell, counselor of Company B and master instructor in English. John, who received his degrees at Amherst College and Columbia University, also serves as Dean of Studies in the summer schools. Mac McMinn has been teaching history to Culver cadets since 1927. He currently is chairman of the history department and is a member of several important faculty committees that help establish the academic policies of Culver. Husky John Mars is remembered by some as an All-American football player during his college days at Brown. To many others, he has won renown as a skilled and compassionate counselor in the battery and as a fluent teacher of Spanish. John is now chairman of the Foreign Languages Department. And now for a word from Colonel John Henderson, who personifies Culver and its traditions to so many. Thoughtful parents today are concerned that their sons shall be well prepared for responsible living and for rewarding careers that will be of service to their fellow men. Their preparation for college are, is important in the total educational program for these young men. Culver's primary mission is to provide young men thorough preparation for the leading college and universities and for responsible citizenship. Culver has been, related, rely, has been rated reliably as one of the top five independent secondary schools in America. Young men who have the privilege to attend Culver are fortunate provided they take full advantage of the many opportunities that are offered them during the regular school year or even during the summer school. Young men should realize that they get out of life what they put into it. Little given, little received. The young men who come to Culver and succeed are those who participate in all phases of the activities of the academy, 
They take their academic work seriously, and they strive to cooperate wholeheartedly in all phases of their well-rounded training. The 46 years of my service with Culver has been a very rewarding experience. I'm sure that my colleagues, faculty and employees, have the same feelings about Culver. All of us are especially grateful for the opportunity to have worked with the many fine young men who have attended the winter and summer schools and to have known their parents. All of us feel richly rewarded for this association.